Uh, I, I'm going to make a bit of a mess of this, I'm sure, because I'm trembling. But um, let me just start with the obvious. And I'll just repeat what uh, Patty just said, that I'm very, very deeply uh, thankful to the organizers of all this, to all the speakers who came. I know there are funding sources. I don't know which ones they are, but I thank for all of them and to all of you. Um, that was the easy part. I think everything else gets more difficult for me to say as I go. Um, when I learned that you wanted me to speak afterwards, uh, I got stuck. Like, what does one say at an event like this? A little bit difficult. All that I could think of was this wild whirlwind of emotions that I had. How am I going to put, make those sensible? How am I going to say anything that, that uh, would you know, have any sort of meaning? And then I thought, maybe I'll just do that. I'll just focus on all of the emotions, one at a time, and see how that comes out. So part of that meant also that I had to write things down, because otherwise they ain't coming out. <laughs> um, and that was the obvious. So the first emotion was just humility. I, when, when I was first mentioned this idea to me, I was just incredulous. And uh, who was it? Who was at the dinner table? I, tears came to my eyes, literally. Um, and I hope that I will escape them for the rest of what I'm going to say, but it might not happen, so I'm just warning you. The fact that you all came out for this is very humbling. It's just implausible to me that I did anything at all to deserve this. And in any case, I'm so honored and so humbled by all of this. Um, I didn't want to say any of those things. <laughs> I'm not going to say any of those things. Uh, gratitude is really the, the biggest thing, but then to whom? Like, where do I start saying my thank yous to people? So I thought that I would start at the beginning. And I have to say that, you know, between my wife and my kids, they kind of messed up my talk a little bit here because they used up a lot of my content. But so, you, you, so you're going to hear it twice. Um, but there are sufficiently different things. So once upon a time, there was a young girl named Aliki uh, Kokotu. And here she is uh, on the island of Corfu with her father, the colonel, and her siblings uh, in uh, 1932. And a young man named uh, Kostas Tsotsos, shown with his family in 1926 in Florida, Greece. They met during World War II when they were both enrolled at Teachers College. And they were members of the Aristotelian Cultural Society, a learned society at the time, trying to maintain some semblance of Greek culture through the occupation uh, in, uh, during World War II. Uh, that picture that you see is from 1942. Um, they eventually fell in love. They got married in 1951 and moved to Canada, to Windsor, Ontario specifically. There they started a family, and John was the first of three children. Uh, I was, I had hair then, I was still cute then. Um, and uh, so uh, that's uh, the beginning of things for me. Uh, I was, I never was easy with authority, and you might note that in all of my interactions with many of you that I just don't um, uh, behave well. But I showed a strong affinity for video monitors, and you've seen this picture already. So, <laughs> from an early age. So there you go. Um, uh, I stopped being cute at about that age. So, so there'll be no more of those pictures. Uh, but really, the, uh, uh, I want to thank my parents to begin with uh, for all of the sacrifices they made of so many kinds, uh, their love, their unwavering support, constant encouragement that formed the foundation for my life. Um, my father taught me the meaning of idealism by his teachings of the ancient Greek ideals and with the romantic poetry that he wrote. He always looked through the way the world really was and to the way it should be and what he hoped it would become. And as John Polanyi said, idealism is the highest form of reasoning. My mother taught me how to take that idealism and put it into practice. 
hard work, perseverance, single-mindedness, focus, and then when you think you have worked hard enough, more hard work. Thomas Edison said that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. My mother must have known that because I really perspired a lot. I want to thank also my siblings, Stephen and Maria, uh, for their support and more importantly, tolerance of what I am told was a very difficult older brother to deal with. Eventually, I went to university and in my third year, I was taught a course titled Computability Theory, or something like that, by this guy named John Milopoulos. Um, I was terrified, because I feared that I was going to embarrass the entire Greek community in Toronto, let alone the whole planet, because I was not going to be a good student. Because this was a theoretical course. I couldn't prove my way out of a paper bag, mostly. Miraculously, I did well enough for him to offer me a summer job. So those of you who commented earlier that I gave you an opportunity, that's the root, because I was once given an opportunity, and I too am paying it back. And I think that's a theme that goes throughout a lot of what I'm going to say. That summer job was on a project called TORUS, the, Tor the Toronto Understanding System. It was a knowledge-based natural language processing system uh, that was supposed to simulate the, um, uh, the graduate secretary. So that when a graduate student want, you know, had questions, they, could, they would go to the graduate secretary to ask. And instead, we were going to build a system to do that. It led to my first paper at the 1975 IJCHI. Uh, to be honest, I think I, sub I contributed like two words, and it was all work done by others. But nevertheless, I have a first paper, at, uh, first AI paper. In his group, I learned about knowledge representation and knowledge-based systems, formal aspects of AI, but much more. Um, I, he taught me what a research group would be. He taught me how to treat students with respect, patience, care, what the social aspects were of maintaining a research group. The, his work ethic, I would always wonder, how the heck did he, all, did he do all that work? And many of my current students wonder sometimes, how do I do all that work? Well, you grow into it. You figure it out eventually. You just figure it out. He gave me opportunities to meet people and so forth. But there was a small problem. I was interested in vision. <laughs> I was not interested in natural language. And there was uh, no vision at uh, the University of Toronto, no vision faculty at the time. Uh, but there was a student who had done something that was vision-y named Norman Badler, and he gave me his PhD thesis and said, here, take a look at this, see if you can you know, work on all of this. Nevertheless, there was clear that something more was needed to my education, so he discovered that there was this um, NATO Advanced Study Institute uh, in this place in France called Bonas. I didn't know what this was. Uh, and there I met Steve Zucker. And there's Steve here. Can't see him very much. Uh, and other people like Jim Crowley, who was another PhD student at uh, Carnegie Mellon. There's Larry Davis at Maryland, still someone who you see a lot. I'll, I'll put up a better picture of you, Steve. There you go. There he is. And, and, and so when I prepared this slide, I took a look at it and I thought, I think I understand now why I agreed to let you help me with the thesis, because I got confused. You looked like my supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you look the same. So the, <laughs> together, I think that I had an unbeatable combination of people helping me throughout. Uh, he taught me, Steve taught me how to combine mathematics with symbolic AI, something that was not common at, at the Toronto group. He taught me about relaxation labeling, and uh, there was a lot of relaxation involved with the labeling, but there was labeling involved too, so that was good. Uh, he taught me about early vision and how to deal with these crazy images that I had of, uh, in cardiology. And the, the, the added a dimension of the problem to me, which uh, for all intents and purposes was formulating my solution as, dare I say it, a neural network. Because it was kind of a neural network at the time. So, yeah, I, I, like as Neil said, I laid the groundwork with, with Steve's help uh, for all of deep learning. So, <laughs> so um, right. Uh, I like quotes sometimes. So here I just like to point out something that Alexander the Great said. 
because my father does tell us that, did tell us that we are d direct descendants of Alexander the Great, that I'm indebted to my father for living, but to my teacher for living well. So in this case, my parents were teachers, so they fit the bill for everything. So I am deeply indebted to, um, to John, to Steve, and to my family for uh, everything. So much for the pre-career stuff. Uh, after all of this, I met someone. And you've already heard from her. She gave you her, story, her side of the story, which is true. I'm not going to add anything further. This is a picture of us at, uh, during our honeymoon. We were uh, taking a cruise in the Mediterranean, and we were on our way to have dinner at the captain's table. And that was a lot of fun. Um, then came children, and you've heard them also. And uh, this combination, the four of us were just like, you know, the, the coolest grouping of people that I could ever have hoped for. And uh, even to, be, to go a little bit further, my children inspire me every day. They inspire me to be the person that I want my children to be. And uh, I just love you guys. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Uh, and now I have a son-in-law too. George, who you'll get to meet later, who we can add to the mix. Um, it's crazy when you have to flip the page at you know, a critical point in time. Uh, <laughs> finally, as an additional thank you, and uh, because it's Mother's Day tomorrow, uh, to my wife, Patty, the one I celebrate with, the one whose shoulder I cry on, the one with whom I share the trials and joys of raising our children, the one I plan my future with, my soulmate for over 30 years, 38 years now. Thank you. And it <laughs> and Arist as Aristotle said, the way I feel is love is composed of a single soul inhabiting two bodies. Okay. That was all the hard part. Phew. The next emotion is pride. I look through this room, and, and, and particularly for those who went, are my students who have gone through my lab, I am so proud of you guys. Like all of you, if I can go one by one all the way through, I can list your accomplishments and think, how amazing is it that all of that actually happened? And that did I actually play a role in that? Just like some tiny, tiny role. And you know, that just makes me so proud of all of you, and I wish all of you the best uh, in the future. Luck plays a big role. Luck has come up several times. Um, and the first bit of luck is to be, uh, to have the, the blessing of having all of these people be trainees that have come through the lab. So the list is actually pretty big if you start looking at you know, all of the categories, the postdocs, the research associates, the interns, blah, blah, blah. It's a pretty big list. So these are the people who make me look good. You know, if you look at you know, papers, whatever you want to say, accomplishments, it's all because I have this particular group of people through all of these years who have actually done all the hard work. Okay, so I, you know, I might have bought, bought people a lunch, I may have had a party, I may have you know, done small things like this, but like, these are the people who have done the hard work, and I'm incredibly lucky to have uh, all, this particular group of trainees. And my current lab, to my current lab, most of whom are here, you have a lot to live up to, but I know you're all perfectly capable of doing it as well as anybody else has ever been in the lab, if not better. So I really anticipate this. But luck has another piece too, and that's amazing collaborators. And there have been many over the years. I think uh, I can't single out people, collaborators here, I mean people who were not on the previous page or not supervisors. So I do want to highlight, you know, maybe three. I hope no one gets upset. The first one I want to highlight is Alan Jepson. And I think the, the, you're the first collaborator after starting the, you know, our career. We started our careers roughly at the same time, maybe months apart or something like that. 
You were in the wrong research area at the beginning, of course, but... <laughs> <laughs> and there you were looking for speech, that's right. So I said, well, why not do vision? So, okay, but Alan had, has played a huge uh, role over, over the years at, at Toronto. He was an amazing uh, office uh, next door mate to have. The number of times I would go and ask him things like, there's this plus sign in this equation. What does that mean again? Because like math was never my strong suit and Alan always helped me out. Uh, but just being able to bounce ideas off, uh, complain to people, and so forth. Uh, so I, I thank you for all of those uh, times, uh, Alan. Uh, at York, um, you were not replaced, but your, position, your role was taken up by Rick Wilde in a large part. Um, and again, lots of whining. Uh, lots of complaining, talking about ideas, uh, and just generally being a good friend. Uh, as with Alan, I really appreciate uh, all of the time that you gave me in order to uh, help me through all sorts of uh, issues through the last number of years at York. I haven't included the people that mem just to, so that no one gets upset. If you were on the previous page, you were not included in this list. So. <laughs> Okay, so I don't want like, you know, Mike all and stuff to, 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 to be uh, an all annoyed. And the, and the other collaborator I want to, uh, to thank particularly is Max. Um, I still remember that first day when, when we met that um, you took me into the lab and you introduced me to Nico and you said, you see what's on the screen there? Those are the results of Tsotso's 13. And I said, what? What's Tsotso's 13 mean? I didn't know what this meant. He goes, that's the 13th experiment we've done based on your model. What? <laughs> I, I couldn't believe my lucky stars at the time to have someone who was pursuing things. And, you know, you've done an amazing job with pursuing all that work. So I really thank you for all that. Um, there are lots of other people that I have tortured over the years with uh, complaining and so forth. Steve can tell you how many times I have called him to... <laughs> to complain, spend the same, and so forth. So all of you, I thank you very, very much. Anticipation is the next. Um, in your futures, I mean, I'm speaking particularly to my trainees here. Uh, I'm really excited to see what you all do. I'm really excited to see how you will develop further uh, in your own careers and to see uh, the heights that you will climb. So I find that a very exciting thing here, not just for uh, you know, the, the immediate trainees, but all of the people who would be descendants on that family tree, like you know, all of the students of each of you and so forth. I'm just very excited about, about all of that. Um, and I felt that due to particular bits of my DNA fooling me into thinking I'm an ancient Greek philosopher, that I should try to leave you with some wisdom. So, here goes. And the problem is that this is the 10 ingredient recipe, <laughs> again. So I'm not going to say anything about it, but I can tell you where it came from since people have asked, have wondered that. Um, around, what year, this was 2008 or six. Around 2005, 2006, the, um, the president of York University at the time, Lorna Marsden, uh, was uh, interested in trying to help uh, female graduate students uh, uh, into research, with research careers. And uh, she was planning this major uh, symposium and asked me if I could present a perspective that would help female graduate students in research. And I thought, why? why would, what would I know? I don't know anything about this. How would I be able to help female graduate students? I have no perspective on any of this. So she insisted, and I thought, OK, I'll give it a shot. And what I came up with was this. Now, without going into any of those details, I think that if you look at the sum total of what I got from my parents, 
what I got from my wife, what I get from my children, what I got from my supervisors, what I've gotten from my colleagues, and what I've gotten from the graduate students that I've learned, it will distill into this. So it's really a product of my experiences and a product of your input to me. So from that perspective, that, that's how this has arisen. And I've been thrilled, first of all, to see it here at all, uh, and, but I've been thrilled also that there have been many universities that I've visited and graduate students have come and eagerly grab my hand and say, come, 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 I want to show you something. And they take me to their desk and this is pinned on their wall. So I, that, that's kind of amazing if you think about it. So I will end with this particular quote from uh, the ancient Athenian statesman Pericles. What you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments or papers, <laughs> but what is woven into the lives of others. So if I've been able to leave this tiny bit in any one of my trainees, I'm really, really thrilled. And I can guarantee you that all of you have left little bits in me as well throughout the years. Thank you so much for this honor. It's really quite unbelievable. <laughs>